concentrations of fish, once found, offer the chance of some great fishing. The AFN crew head to the Northern Territory in search of stacked up runoff barramundi before heading south to chase schooling black broom. The runoff season is a prime time to hunt for huge barramundi. Bill Classen joins Kane and Mark as they head to the mouth of the flooding tropical rivers in search of big fish. Well, I'm fishing with Kane Dysart and Mark Parkinson here on the last of the big spring tides for, um, well, mega metre runoff barra, Kane. Yeah, yeah, it's uh, late April. We're a typical runoff situation here in a coastal creek. Got all the flood water in the background up on the floodplains coming out, feeding out into the, into the ocean. Um, bringing with it a lot of bait, a lot of tarpon, mullet, uh, scat. Yeah. And a lot of expectations, mate. Look at all the boats around us. <laughs> yeah, there are a few boats here, mate. When the word gets out, it's, um, yeah, yeah. it's pretty packed here. Yeah. So they've been getting a few good barra here in the last um, couple of days of the tide? Word is it that they've been catching a few. Yeah, okay. Yeah. So I'm pretty confident we're going to get some fish. Well, obviously these other guys are. And in the background here is the Arafura Sea. Yeah, Arafura Sea, mate. This, is, this floodplain's running straight out onto it. Yep. And you were saying to me that's where a, a lot of the big barra actually yeah. move in to feed on the bait coming out of these um, these floodplains that are running out through the creek here. Basically, yeah, we've got a, a post-spawning aggregation of fish here. They've they've already done their thing this year. Yeah, okay. Spawned and all the little juveniles will be up the creeks now, and these guys are just reconditioning themselves, uh, mm -hmm. feeding up before the dry season. Okay. Well, let's give it a cast or two. Have a talk to yourself and Mark. You can tell us some of the techniques and show us some of the lures you use and hopefully you can get me a big barra. Let's do it, mate. I'm here today with Mark from Adrenaline Barra and Billfish Safaris. Um, he's taking us to a not so secret location along the coast somewhere in the Northern Territory. We're fishing a coastal runoff creek situation. This time of year with the runoff is the uh, water's pouring off the floodplains with all the bait coming out with it. Um, you're only getting a small window of three to four foot of clean fresh water. Right, and you've got the salt water running in underneath. Now those barrows move in with the salt and then they ambush in between the salt and the fresh water. And that's why we're using, you know, the bombers. So what that enables us is to get these in that strike zone that, that they are working in. Um, one thing we do is just beef the hooks up a bit. And with the colours, chartreuse, uh, if the water's a little darker, okay, this one just stands out a little bit more, just gives a slight more whitish colour in the water. Your golds, golds are pretty famous, the gold bombers. Okay, they stand out, emit a lot of light when they're worked. Even on a low sunlight level, they yeah. still emit a lot of light. And there seems to be quite a few tarpon pouring out of here. There's a lot of tarpon, yeah. and there's a lot of juvenile scat coming out at the moment. And that's why we've got the tiger lily, because the scat do have vertical stripes, stripes yeah. on them. Yeah. So with a bit of gold to help get through that water. So. There is another colour also in the in the green bomber range. So there's another saying, when the water's clean, go green, and that's normally the top of the tide when that salt water cleans everything right yeah, up. Yeah. Where we are, and kid with the creeks pumping out here, there's a bit of a, a colour change forming in the background. Yeah, and what we're actually doing is sitting right on the edge of the main channel right to on. the creek. So those barrows move up in along the edge of that channel or they'll come in across the flat down into that channel in search of the food. Well, I don't know about you, but I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm getting, getting a bit itchy with all this yeah, fish I'd action around us, and I'm gonna definitely want to get cast this and one and get into it. Catch some fish. Mark, you specialise in big barra. You're a guide in the NT. And basically, big barra and billfish are the uh, two target species you specialise in. Working these big minnows, what sort of a retrieve is best? Uh, what I like to do is just just work the, the lure, so it's just a one and then a one two, because the lure's actually, as it's swimming along, it goes down when you pull down, and then it suspends, and then it'll drop down again, and then it'll suspend. So because a barramundi's a imploding fish, on that suspending, when the lure just suspends under the water, that's when the barrows, nine times out of ten, will inhale and you'll get the hook up. So 
you know, I'll work the rod down low or I'll work the rod down or work it up high. So I'm working that lure in both columns. Okay. All right, so the barrows, as the bait comes through, you want to try and keep it up high. Where on the flats, you just want to keep it down a little bit underwater so that, um, you know, you can maximise your potential of hookup. Far oh, out. Oh, that's, that's a big fish, mate. Well, that jigging technique definitely worked, Mark. Yeah, mate, right on cue. <laughs> nice fish. He's a nice fish. So what was that, the slow pause retrieve? Yep. Now this is the most critical time, people, when you're actually landing a fish. This one looks like it might just go close to that metre mark. Oh. <laughs> you're giving him a bit of a stick there, Mark. Yeah, you got to do that, don't you, around here? Yeah, she came it a bit back to me as well. Slide it. Slide it. Right on, mate. There we go. Well done, mate. I think she'll go close. She'll go very close to a metre. So it's pretty important, folks, when you do get these good fish in, to act quickly. Because we don't want to keep them out of the water too long. 101. Okay, so we're going to tag these fish today. Northern Territory Fisheries have got a pretty successful barramundi tagging system going here that it actually helps monitor the health of the barramundi fishery. So what we're doing is, is we're second dorsal spine, just removing a couple of scales out of the way. This tag's a dart tag and it's meant to lock in behind the, that dorsal spine. So it's in there, turn him, and that's locked in, won't come out. The card, the number on the card actually corresponds with the number of this tag. So all the details of the fish that was caught today, the size of it, the date, where it was caught, the name of the lucky angler, which happens to be marked today. And yeah, that's all recorded in the fisheries database. And when someone else catches this fish, you can then tell how big it's grown over that period of time. And it just gives us a good indication of the health of the fishery. Well, Mark. Meet a barra. Again. That's what we come here for. That's it. Yeah, you never get sick of catching them, do you? You were just showing us that slow tweak and retrieve, and it, it worked, mate. Yep. On cue? It certainly did. I think so, I'm going to try and imitate that one now. So we'll get this big girl in and get her going. There she goes. Little Pat, send her on the way. So we're using quite large lures here. You know, is, it, is it the old old saying, large lure, large fish? Is that, is that why it works like that, or is it just we're imitating the size of the bait? No, we're trying to imitate the size of the bait. I mean, you can catch metre barrows on big rubbers, but uh, it's pretty hard to work a rubber, you know, unless it's fairly weightless, which doesn't enable you to cast as far as what you sort of hope to. But we need the action, we need the movement off the lures in the water, and a bit of rattle, it is a little murky. So that's why we do go the, the harder bodies, but also with the bombers, you know, this is a 16A bomber, and we also go up to a 17A bomber, which is just a dual treble lure. And uh, when the tarpon, or they're hitting a lot bigger mullet, like the diamondback mullet and that that come out, yeah. and the bigger tarpon, we, we'll actually step up a size. So, yeah. right I mean, you've seen in the wild yourself, Kane, they, they blow, you know, four or five pound mullet out of the water. Yeah, so, yeah, they've got big mouths, that's for sure. Yeah, so it's no problems getting this down there. Okay, mate, so now, now that we know the lures to use and, and how to use them, we can start to hear a few fish buffing around the back of us here. Yeah, there's a few big fish just starting to buff and rise and roll, and uh, there's actually one bait out the back that is onto one. But uh, those fish will move up, up towards the mouth of the creek, 
bike and we're right at it, so we're in a prime position. We, yeah, we seem to be in the prime spot right here, wouldn't you say? There's quite a few boats around us. Um, we're right at the front, right at the creek mouth. We, we sort of got up a bit earlier than everyone else. Yeah, it's still... Got here first. <laughs> it still doesn't matter, they're all around us, but... Um, yeah, no, we'll, we'll make do with what we've got and I'm sure we're going to get some metre barrows today. really is just a, a lot of it's due to luck. You know, if your lure lands in the right spot, right across the nose of a big barra, I don't think they can resist usually. So when, you, when you're fishing for these big fish, it sometimes pays to, to mix your retrieve up, vary the way you're bringing your lure back. Sometimes just a, a slow roll, letting the lure do its own sort of work, often fools them. Other times you need a little bit of an erratic jig every now and then. Just to make it look like it's a wounded bait fish. And it pays to mix it up a bit. And once you find what is working, it pays to stick to it then. So when, when I sort of say to the mix your retrieve up and vary it, try a full retrieve you know, just slow rolling it in. If that's not working, try the next one with a bit of a jig every, and a pause. A lot of the time they'll hit it on the pause. At the moment I haven't really found exactly what's working. There are fish around. I don't think it'll be long. A lot of the action you can sort of see around here at the moment is Salmon, threadfin salmon smashing into schools of little scats and baby tarpon. The odd bigger implosion you can hear, I'd say. They, they're generally the bigger bar. There's, there's quite a few of them around. Yes. 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 It's all right. Just keep her head down a bit. Keep casting, okay? Keep him doing, mate. Go. Use, use the rod angle to turn him back around. Yeah, rod down line to the side. That's it. See what Bill's doing there? He's turning the fish by the rod angle. Come up, come up. She's going for the anchor, right? Oh, well done. She's going the other way. Good girl. Good girl. <laughs> I never quieten down, mate. What a ripper. Yeah, nice nice big saltwater barra. And, uh, How good is that? I think she may go close. But she might be in the high 90s, I think. High 90s, do you think? Not a metre? No, we'll, we'll put her on the mat and have a look. What a great fish. She'll, uh, she'll go pretty close, I think. Actually, I've got her on my lighter rod, so it's a bit hard to control. And she is. A metre four. A metre four? Well, that's the biggest, <laughs> biggest barra I've caught. Well, actually, you could say right on there is a metre five. Right there. Good fish. A 105. Yeah, we're just going to pop a tag in her. There you go. Uh, for the interests of research. As we've explained before, the second dorsal spine. Twist, and out it comes. Very good. Well, what a fish. My biggest wild barra. And better still, lure casting as well. And on the light rod. 
which made it a bit hard to control. You can understand now why the boys tell us to uh, use heavy duty gear. I'll just get this fish back in the water. Just be a little bit careful about crocs. There we go. For those of you who are wondering where we caught these big barra, then look for the Lower Mary River on the map. The Mary River floodplains are renowned for some of the biggest barra in the Territory. The fishing that we experienced was on the big spring tides, and as you can see, they really produced the good sport. Each season, large schools of black brim form in various parts of the Gippsland Lake system. Finding these fish can be easy. Catching them, however, requires a large amount of finesse. Oh, got him. Well, that's a nice flatty, but I'm actually here looking for some brim around these docks, which can be a little bit difficult at times because the brim here at lakes, the black brim, as they are all around the country, are notoriously picky. So it's a matter of working out just what they're biting on. My fishing day started on the docks, but the plan was to jump aboard with Rhett. The local brim had been schooling in big numbers, but were very fussy, and it was gonna take some tournament style finesse to catch them. So Rhett, you've lived in the Gippsland Lakes all your life? Yeah, mate, yep. And fish for black brim, a good part of that time, and you're actually uh, tournament fishing now too. Yeah, yeah, the um, local publican put it to me and said, do you want to have a go? And I went, oh yeah. And fishing for black brim, especially school fish, gee, I found it frustrating over the years. You'll see, sometimes you'll see dozens of fish, and boy, it's hard to get them to bite. Ooh, That's got him. Beauty. In and out pretty quick. That's a guy. A nice guy. And Grub Z on a hidden weight system. Bit of a finesse presentation. So this approach, and of course we're lucky because there's not a lot of wind, mm. but I'm just using it. 20th of an ounce hidden weight system yep. and that little two and a half inch grub Z, one from the uh, Z-Man range. And I guess I, I like to use that too because they're so resilient. You know, you can catch two, three, four, half a dozen fish Yeah. and they, you know, gee, they hang on to the hook well. Yeah, they stay on. They don't. Here you go, there's a don't, bite. Don't fall to bits, that's Look for sure. That. The other thing too is these Z-Man are quite buoyant. Yeah. So you pull it, you match them up with the right weight and you can just hang them, hang them down in the strike zone, just get them to move down ever so slowly. Yeah, yeah that was interesting, Red. Now that I reckon sort of I think you're really going to ha finesse them, I think. I mean, you could see then, there was no retrieve in that at all. No. Well, mate, I reckon we might be onto something there. Yeah, they seem to work pretty well, don't they? Yeah, just finesse them out with these um, little grub Z. There you go. So you can see here with a finesse presentation, you're just not, just trying to float that grub horizontally. So the hidden weight jig head will allow your grub to go down through the water horizontally, whereas if it's a head weighted jig head, it'll fall vertically. So very much a finesse presentation. And I haven't even retrieved it yet. I'm just trying to get it down probably 10, 15 feet. Down there now. Oh. Oh. Now, 
There's flashes all yeah, under the boat there. I saw all them. Hey? There's a nice fish. There's a nice fish. Oh, look at it. Definitely the guy to let it sink. Yeah. He's not bad. Nice fish. Yeah, he's nice. Yeah, nice, good size bridge. Nice fish. Yeah. Happy to catch them every day of the week. Yeah. They like those grubs, don't they? Too easy, eh? Yeah, all well, those grubs work, Bill. The um, watermelon red seem to, to work very well. Now all I'm doing here is just monitoring the line. You can actually hold it if you want to. The brim grabs it, you'll see it just move down or maybe to either side. So I've been working on about a one minute drop to get it down to about 10 feet. It's getting there now. There it goes, look, there's a bite. He's a nice specimen. Yeah, he was down a bit too. I'd say they've been in the system a while too, mate. They're um, pretty dark. Pretty aren't dark. They? Good fish. He's not too bad. Nice fish. So for those of you who want to get amongst some finesse, soft plastic action around the docks, all you need is a six foot 10 to seven foot length rod in around about one to three kilo weighting, a 1,000 to 2,500 size thread line reel topped up with four pound braid and finished off with a two to six pound fluorocarbon leader. Yeah, red. Oh, what a lovely fish. Have a look at that one. He's a good size. Not a kilo, but well, I reckon he, it's the one we wanted. Good. Oh, got him. What a lovely black brim. That's what I was after. And today, with these little grub zeds and the hidden weight system and a horizontal approach, it worked a treat. To find out more about AFN or the tackle and gear used in tonight's show, visit our website afn.com.au or like our Facebook page, AFN Fishing and Outdoors.